Today we're going to talk about angle relationships and proving them. And this is chapter 2.8. And uh, just like we started with segment relationships, um, we had a ruler postulate for segments. We have a protractor postulate for angles. This protractor postulate is what it says. Given array AB and a number R between 0 and 180, there is exactly one ray with an endpoint at A extending on either side of ray AB such that the measure of the angle formed is the number R. Given ray AB and the number R, that is between 0 and 180, there's exactly one ray with an endpoint A extending on either side of AB. So we can bring it down this way or up this way, such that the measure of the angle formed is R. In other words, the angle formed right here is between whatever that number is. And it simply works like this. We can put a protractor here, this here. Read the zero here, read over the increasing numbers until we get to where this is. This angle looks like it is somewhere about to between 125 and 130. So therefore, we can measure angles. Have a tool whereby we can measure angles. Another postulate we need to talk about is the uh, angle addition, addition postulate whenever we're talking about angle relationships. And just like in segments, we have the segment addition postulate, or SAP. Angles, we have the angle addition postulate, or AP. It does the same thing the segment addition postulate does for segments. It does it for angles. Statement is, if R, point R, is in the interior of angle P, QS, the inside of angle PQS, then the measure of angle PQR plus the measure of angle RQS equals the measure of PQS. So I can take the measurement of angle PQR, this piece in here, and add it to the measurement of angle RQS, this piece here, and I should get the large angle. And the converse is also true. If the measure of PQR, this angle, plus the measure of this angle equals the measure of the larger angle, then R is in the interior of angle PQS. Okay? Sort of the segment addition postulate equivalent of R is in between uh, P and S in that angle. We use this the same way we do the segment addition postulate in proving angle relationships. Um, you can add two angles together to get the sum of their total. Uh, and then the, then the converse is also true. These two postulates will be used extensively to help prove angle relationship theorems. Next we want to move into the theorems that uh, we have for angles. First theorem we want to talk about is one just like we had with segments called segment congruence theorem. We have one for angles called angle congruence theorem. It includes the same thing, has the same challenges, means exactly the same for angles as the segment congruence theorem does for segments. It has three parts. The reflexive property, which simply states that angle one is congruent to angle one. Here, I'm equal to myself. Symmetric property states that if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then angle 2 is congruent to angle 1. Identical twin property. Transitive property states if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. The identical triplet property. They're proven the same way 
as we prove the segment congruence theorems, we have the same difficulty in that this right here is a picture, and the transitive properties that we know about are algebraic in nature, they deal with real numbers. How do we prove them? We simply use the definition of congruent angles this time, not congruent segments, but the definition of congruent angles. And that definition is two angles that are congruent have the same measure, and the converse is true. Two angles that have the same measure are congruent. That allows us to go in between the two congruent and having their measures equal to each other. And by using that, we can prove these theorems and then use them um, instead of having to prove them. There are the proofs are very similar to, almost identical to, except for the how we state what we're doing. We're doing segments on one, we're doing angles on the other. So follow the transitive property proof that you have. And then uh, our suggestion is that you uh, sit down and prove these three theorems, or this one theorem and this three pieces. Uh, might be good for a quiz.